okay, well, I don't want to jump until I know, no. Right. It's, but, but they would never know, no. They, that's what I'm saying. You'll never know, no. <laughs> you never know, no. No, 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 no. Hello, and welcome back to the Croak and Crow podcast. I am Spencer Cartier. I am Saskia Van Julenberg. You know, every time you put a name, I have to search that name up. How am I going to do that with what you just said? It's Rembrandt's wife. Rembrandt's wife. We're a big fan of Rembrandt. That's Baroque art, right? Um, For the people who can't afford it. <laughs> No, I think it's. Bar- I think Rembrandt was Baroque, and Baroque was around the. It was either right before the Renaissance. Hi, or, Frank. Well, I'm just going to do this first. Right before the Renaissance, or right after, but where the Renaissance was about life and colors, Baroque was about raw emotion, mm-hmm. and so you find like people dying and just like suffering. It was how do you evoke the most emotion yeah. through art? But he might not even be Baroque, so I don't know what I'm saying. This here is Frank, Frankie Boy. He just got a new job. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. He's fired from um, Panera a long time ago. Yeah, the we start, never said. At the start of the pandemic, he got fired from uh, Panera. They were laying off employees. But now he's working at a place I used to work at, Monty's, Monty's Sandwich Shop. Um, that is the place where I went from a sandwich artist, was a sandwich artist all my life. Anywhere I worked, I was a sandwich guy, to a cheesesteak man. You? Yeah. It's oh, right. Where I, it's where I first... Went from the cold sandwiches to the hot grill. <laughs> <laughs> and I became the number one cheesesteak man in... Um, cheesesteak land. In the cheesesteak land. Philadelphia and the surrounding areas. Everyone would come to me and they'd say, give me what you got. And I'd give them what <laughs> I got. <laughs> and what you had. But yeah, that's um, that's the introductions, guys. It's a good day to be alive. What day is it? It is July 15th. July 15th. I feel like that sounds like a special day. Well, it's uh, my husband's birthday. No, it's not. Rembrandt. Oh, Rembrandt. <laughs> I am Saskia von Eulenberg. Okay, well, happy birthday, Rembrandt. Maybe I could have postponed the Yeah, that's why right. you talk. didn't know, but I did. That's I why. imagine it was, an, it was an end all. No, my my name sometimes has um, a connection later to the story. Makes sense. Yeah, um, Rembrandt, artist, no matter what period he was in, if it was Baroque or not, we're a fan nonetheless. Yes, Rembrandt. I do have papers for Rembrandt. No, we're going to talk about Rembrandt. Um, well. So you knew if he was Baroque art or not? No, no, I don't know that. Uh, I just know that his his name was Rembrandt Harmazon von Rien. And he was from Germany? I don't know. I can't remember. Yeah, he was. <laughs> that's, a lot, that's a lot of words on that paper to not Oh, this was know. just printed without um, <laughs> hopes of repeating. But um, I believe he was German because, interestingly, um, the Jews loved him. Because he was German, but he painted um, so many biblical, mm. um, biblical uh, Old Testament Old stories Testament or Torah stories paintings, and he um, actually, um, yeah, German Germanic ancestry who did not regard the Jews in the Holland of his day as a misfortune. Shout out Rembrandt, and he approached them with friendly sentiments, dwelt in their midst, and portrayed their personalities. With his painting. Double shout out Rembrandt. Um, I'm guessing you would uh, like his painting about Bathsheba. Is it Bathsheba? Yeah. Mm. Uh, King David um, Bathsheba. He has a very famous painting. I think the, to- the, the ba- Bathsheba. I don't know what it's called. Bathsheba at her bath. Yeah. It looks right here. Um, did you know how many wives David had? No. I I read if it was if it obviously was all in the Bible and I would have read it, but. For some reason, I only ever thought about the two. Uh-huh. I was thinking it was uh, Michael or Michael, M I C H I L, who was the one. Um, it was King Saul's son, King Saul's daughter, and then <laughs> Bathsheba. But there was one after Bathsheba, and there was five in, in the middle of that. It yeah, was normal it was, for the time. It was very normal from the time. Um, so Rembrandt is a classical artist. Yes. And any he- art. May historian would knows his name household name in art households yeah and um it would be like realistic looking yes paintings and also didn't he have a lot to do with lighting mm, yeah where the lighting was coming from um yeah i printed out a bunch on his um biblical work but i mean we don't have to go through all that 
We don't need to do all that. Nah, it's just not all today. The, all the Bible stories. Not on July fifteenth. Not that I mean, it is his birthday. <clears throat> the prodigal birthday. son and um, Jesus' birth and Esther and and all that. So you could look it up. Um, yeah. They are darkish. I don't know if it's you from from over here. It's looking a little baroquey. Okay. In my book. Yeah. But um, it, I'm sure it is written somewhere where what kind of work he did. Yeah. Um, but. Uh, I don't know exactly. I'm sorry to say about okay. that. Well, I just thought it was interesting that he was a biblical artist. Mm-hmm. Not it's just what he wanted to paint. Yeah. That um, I would be his wife today. Today's his birthday. Happy birthday. Um, And that's all I have. Um, uh, You can see, I think you see, see some Rembrandts in the United States. Yes. But um, the Louvre, you know, mm-hmm. of course, you would see. Isn't there a Rembrandt in the Philadelphia Museum of Art? Maybe. Maybe. Could be. Yeah. And the Rembrandts, the the band, they wrote the theme song for Friends. Oh. um, I'll be there for you. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) I only knew one part. Yeah. So that's all I have for July 15th. That's all you need. It was his birthday. More more than enough. It's his birthday and um, what's it called? Google or look on YouTube for Rembrandt and see if you like his paintings. Yes. But um hey, it is Thursday today. So it is not only the special holiday of Rembrandt's birthday, it is also the weekly holiday on Crook and Crow that goes a little something like this. Walk through Thursday. Roll the intro if you'd be so inclined. Welcome back. Hope you're having fun cuz walk through Wednesday just begun. All right, guys, you know the deal. I've, how, how many weeks have we done Walk Through Thursday at this point? Every week. <laughs> no, I'm saying like, because it wasn't an original. No, it wasn't. It, it came la- later on. Yeah, it's when I wanted to do the 23rd Psalm, so I'm yeah. thinking it was 2021. Yeah, early, early, mm-hmm. maybe January, February. Yeah, like it was like, let's, can, do we want to do this? Yeah. Yeah. Anyhow, guys, what Walk Through Thursday is, is we open up the Bible. Bible's open. Hide your eyes. Wait, no, open your eyes. Open your eyes. The Bible's open. (laughs) And what we do is we pick a verse. Any verse. Sometimes you give it to us. Sometimes we give it to ourselves. Yeah. Sometimes the Holy Spirit sends it down through Frank. Right. Who lets us know what it is. Right. And we look at that verse in detail, Mm -hmm. sentence by sentence, word by word, line by line, in that order. And we talk about it. We say what it means to us. It might not mean the same thing to everyone. Bible's a living word. Right. And that's the most important thing it's the thing that i learned late in life Mm -hmm. it's the thing that we want people to know it's what it's our message um that if you hear a line from the bible anywhere uh or read it in a fortune cookie and you you think oh look what i have to ask someone what that means what does that mean what does that mean you can decide for yourself what it means. Yeah, it's 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 personal. It's it's what it means to you. It's what you get out of it. Yes. That's what the Holy Spirit is, right? Right. It's like it's the message. And so over time you have all these prophets and people who are yeah. getting something from the word and it's it's for them. Sometimes it's to spread that message, but mm-hmm. other times it's just what you need to hear at that given moment on that given day. Right. And we don't um, we won't fight you. <laughs> yes, we will. We won't fight you if you feel that it means something different to you. No. Now, there are there are biblical scholars that love to debate. Yeah. And they get together to to um literally debate. Um what's it called? <sighs> that that thing in school is not debate club, but it's called something like, Oh, I'm in forensics. Uh, okay. You know, where I'm gonna give my side why it's, why I believe this and you're gonna yeah. give you that's some. That's it's a hobby people can have. Yeah, it's not what we partake in. No. So you you can have um, opinions based on on laws or just moral conscientiousness of just living life, mm-hmm. society of all these like kind of different ways of living. What is that in like philosophy where it's like uh, can, 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 Kantianism, utilitarianism, like all these things okay. where it's like this is the way I think I should live life. The Bible is interesting in the way where. No one's like, it's real. It's directly, it's right. divine. Right. And so it's what it means to you. And that's what's special what it about means it. to you. And no one can argue that. No and one can argue. Right. I read this from the Bible and this is what it inspired me to think. Right. And that's the problem. Uh, when people say, 
you read that wrong yeah. or that's not or you know this is why i'm doing this it's like mm-hmm. well it's not why we're doing it amen to that so what are we what are we reading today okay today we're going to read um deuteronomy one deuteronomy is that the boring book um i don't know what that means <laughs> <laughs> like the one with all the names or is that numbers that's numbers numbers isn't it like genesis exodus Dude, I think it feels, Deuteronomy, I think it's, Leviticus. I think it's right up there. Okay. In the Early books. In Moses' the, books. Moses. Yeah. And this is, what I want to talk about is about Moses. Hey. And I know sometimes we have one um, one line, one sentence. Yeah. Uh, sometimes we have a bunch. Sometimes we have this. Sometimes we have that. Anyway, this seems like a lot. Oh. Right? A lot to dissect. It looks like a lot because it says... Um, Look at these verses 20 to 33, and that's Whoa. really long. It's 13. But I know. Quick math. But I, we don't have to. Um, the people can look it up. Mm-hmm. It'll, this, be, it'll be up right here. Okay. And wh- where we took it from was um, New International Version. And I really love it. Okay. Um, but every time I try, okay, I, I, li- I wanted to talk about this part, Deuteronomy mm-hmm. 1, 20 to 33. And I realized it was too long. But every time I tried to pick one hey, sentence, it was like not making sense. The so, one time, I mean, actually last week, we went to try to do one verse on the story of Joseph and the coat of many colors. Right. And we ended up talking about the whole story in right. one minute. So, so um, just to tell you um, that the, this, what was interested in me was Moses um, had led the Israelites through the desert for 40 years. Yes. And they had trials, tribulations, but they also had lots of victories mm-hmm. and they were saved. You they, know, they, they were saved. <laughs> they were eating. There was some manna on the way. And living and everything like this. Um, at the 40th, at the end, this, they're, you know, 40, this is it, the promised land. Um, Moses takes them. He says, we're going to go up this hill. And he says, I can't follow you. No, he thought he might. Oh. But this is when they first got there. And um, he said, this is we're here and um and they said oh like where and they're like we're gonna and this was like i said after you have to think this is after he defeated the king two different kings and yeah even the king of the town where they were and he said we're gonna go up here and and um he said don't be afraid don't be discouraged this is what's happening um they were let they didn't take his word for it Mm -hmm. they said okay well we're all not we're not all gonna go how about if some of us go? Yeah. See if it's safe. He was like, "Fine." They went. They came back. They're like, "Yeah, it was great." They brought fruit from up there. Like, yeah, you know, mm. it's doable. But did they go? No. Then they started doubting again. Mm-hmm. Oh, is this the striking of the rock? Um, I don't know. I don't know where we're at. Just... <laughs> they didn't. They did. They said again. So, um, they just started. They lost all confidence. Mm-hmm. They doubted what he was telling them to do. Yeah. They doubted even their own scouts. Mm-hmm. And they were like, they literally twisted in their minds that this was all a huge plan of God, that he had led, that he led them to destruction. Okay. They're not going to go up the hill. And um, Moses keeps trying to encourage them. He says, again, do not be terrified. Do not be afraid of, you know. And um, so he's mad. So this is Moses's final speech to them. And um, he's he's kind of just telling them how ungrateful, how untrusting <laughs> yeah. that they are, and yeah. basically how stupid because because what he says is um and he, he's trying to tell them if I'll just I'm down here at um thirty right, and he's saying why don't you trust God who fought for you, you you saw it you saw miracles with your own eyes in the wilderness and god carried you as a father carries his son all the way Mm -hmm. till you reach this place and you still don't trust that's the end of that um what will happen is god will say none of you are going through that's what you just said where he was (laughs) moses was like i can't go with you yeah um joshua joshua gets to go Mm -hmm. and bring all the children uh but I just think it's so interesting. Yeah, well, let's read it first because they're they're at the edge of their seats and they're like, "Oh, I didn't know we were going to read it, or else I wouldn't have wasted it at that time." Yeah, we're going to read it. Oh, okay. We have to read it. I didn't it's know that. Through Thursday. I know. I didn't know that. I thought that's, that's like because I wasn't sure. We're which... like the, we're like the scouts. We're like we walked up. Okay. They want to know. They okay. want to walk up. Okay. They want to see the fruit. Definitely. So there's a lot. So I think we should just go 
um, in the paragraphs. I'll go first. You go second. Okay, boom, boom, boom. sure, sure, sure. Then Moses said to them, you have reached the hill country of the Amorites, which the Lord our God has given us. See, the Lord your God has given you the land. Go up and take possession of it as the Lord. The God of your ancestors told you, do not be afraid. Do not be discouraged. Then all of you came to me and said, let us send men ahead to spy out the land for us and bring back a report about the route we are to take and the towns we will come to. They left and went up into the hill country and explored it, taking with them some of the fruit of the land. They brought it down to us and reported, it is good land that the Lord our God is giving us. But you were still unwilling to go up. You rebelled against the command of the Lord your God. You grumbled in your tents and said, the Lord hates us. So he brought us out of Egypt to deliver us in the hands of the Amorites to destroy us. Where can we go? Our brothers have made our hearts melt in fear, they say. The people are stronger and taller than we are. The cities are large, with walls up to the sky. That an uh, Moses. Then I said to you, do not be terrified. Do not be afraid of them. The Lord your God, who is going before you, will fight for you as he did for you in Egypt before your very eyes and in the wilderness. There you saw how the Lord your God carried you as a father carries his son all the way you went until you reached this place. In spite of this, you did not trust in the Lord your God, who went ahead of you on your journey, in fire by night and in cloud by day, to search out places for you to camp and to show you the way you should go. Right. Interesting. It's interesting. So they had so much reassurance. Yeah. They had 40 so, years. They had so much experience of God not failing them. Yeah. They had so much reassurance from Moses saying God won't fail you. Mm-hmm. But I feel it all boils down to um, the line 28, where it said, our brothers have made our hearts melt in fear. Mm. So they threw away all that, that that should have given them trust and comfort and reassurance. Yeah. And they turned to fellow humans, mm. their brothers, which just means, you know, they're, they're people. Yeah. And um, no, like they've now, we're going to, we're going to think, we're going to go with them with what they're saying. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I mean, if this is not just a a message for life, I don't know what is. On a very general scale, you see the doubting and doubting comes up a lot in the Bible. You see it with Peter who goes onto the water and then last second he lets his human side come in and then he gets in the water, but Jesus takes him out. But this, what you just said, is important because this is more about group settings right? where you let the doubt around you cloud yes. your judgment. And how many times does that happen where you have a goal, you have an aspiration, maybe even you're praying on it and you're like, oh, well, I, I believe in God. And then someone's like, but you know, this could be bad. It could go wrong. Yes. And then you start being like, oh, it could go wrong. It could, yeah. Maybe, maybe like this isn't my prayers being answered. Maybe this is the worst thing I, I, I could be doing right now. Right. And you're not trusting that because it, it's, you're letting your fear get ahead of your trust. Right. And that is never good. The what ifs. The what ifs. The possibilities. Yeah. And trying to seek reassurance. Now, this is a great example mm-hmm. of if you don't have faith that God has you. Now, yeah. God has you. And we've seen it a million times. The Lord is my shepherd. Yeah. He's watching after the sheep and the, and the you know, blades of grass and the birds um and moses is is scolding them Mm -hmm. he carried you as a father carries his son yeah and but they are not willing to go forward with that faith and trust yeah and therefore that this this i feel proves there's not enough reassurance in the world that can make you have feel that make you feel safe yeah yeah. So you have to stop looking for it. No. What I see, there's a, a thing, very last one, or 32. So second and third. In spite of all this, you did not trust in the Lord your God, who went ahead of you on your journey. And then... Yeah. So he went ahead. So I see this as a trust fall. Yeah. A jumping off of a cliff into cloudy underneath. You don't know what's, what's there. Right. You'll never know what's at the bottom. No. But if you have... This isn't saying like, Oh, God will grant me wings. So he's not like what the devil said. This is saying the Lord went ahead of you. Right. So the Lord went ahead and knows it's safe. Right. And you need like, so you'll never, you'll never, no one will ever tell you what the bo- uh, what's on the bottom. But if, right. like, like we, we compare God to the father. <clears throat> right. If you're at this trustful 
and you're you're there and your dad went went up first and then you get there and you're like but what's on the bottom what's on the bottom it's like your dad went down and, right and you know it's safe scout it out the place you know you know it's okay and to still doubt that to be like okay well i don't want to jump until i know no right it's, but but they would never know no they, that's what i'm saying you'll never know no <laughs> you never know no, no 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 because for 40 years this relationship was being established yeah. this, and and um and God was proving himself. I don't want to say that. That seems like a weird way to say it. It's not proving himself. It was just he's he never failed you before. Never failed you. Yeah. For 40 years. Yeah. So um, I, what I would say to take from the Bible verse, this old story of some, some ungrateful people mm-hmm. that many years ago, what does it have to do with today? Yeah. I'm saying for people who say, I just need a little more reassurance. Yeah. I just need a little more time. Unless you change, unless you fully agree to, um, you know, lose yourself and trust, like you said, trust fall, give yourself to the faith. It'll be another 40 years. You still wouldn't have been convinced. Yeah. And another 4,000 miracles and another 4,000 victories. You wouldn't be convinced. Mm -hmm. So I feel like this. So what does this story have to do for us? I feel it's telling future people it doesn't come through time. It no. doesn't come through messages coming back from, mm-hmm. from your brothers. It doesn't come from, you know, um, yeah. being able to see, like, you have to trust. Yeah, you have to trust wholeheartedly. And it's a, it's the human condition to fear. It's like we, we all have it in us. And so one of the things that we say uh, relationships with God is a personal thing is because right. Obviously, church is a community and, yes. and you want to surround yourself with people. But why it's a personal thing is because there will always be people who say, that might not be a good idea. Right. I don't think you should move there. I don't think you should right. go for this. And you're like, oh, but I, I, I have faith that this is what I'm supposed to do. Right. You need to believe in that faith for yourself and you need to say, no, you know what? I wholeheartedly believe I don't know what's going to happen. Right. But I have faith that right. I will I will be okay. Definitely. Um and if if it's interesting if you go p- a little past this, I think it might still be Deuteronomy 1. You find out that um Joshua did take the children of these people in and mm-hmm. they were successful and um God said, it, you know, in the Bible verse, the story, the way the story goes is bring the children because they are so innocent yeah. and young uh-huh. that they have not yet, like, and again, speaking symbolically, it's not children, Mm-mm. like young people who've only been around a few years, but the mind. The innocent mind. Of- and too much information is not enough information. Yeah. I mean, Jesus always says, you know, be like children. Right. And in this story, it's it's the same thing. It's why, oh, strive to be a child? What does that mean? Play in a playground? No, but it means to ha- like not have all of those the years and decades of right. the earthly fears building up right. to get in the way of things like between you and the Lord. When, right. when a kid's born, you know, we say it's a child of God, that's the only relationship it has. And then as, as the child grows, right. sometimes... You know, the God gets put or God gets put second and it's like, oh, well, I have all this. And right. it's like, hold on, let's think rationally. And it's like, you lose that. It's just you and me. It's like, you know, right. father, father, son, it's just you and me. Right. Um, and, you know, this this could be an example of consider the source, you know, because <laughs> here you have Moses and he's saying, do not be afraid. Do not be discouraged. Mm-hmm. And then he says, do not be terrified. Do not be afraid. He says this again and again. And but the 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 people in the camp, they're saying, be afraid. Yeah. They're bigger than us. The walls are taller than us. We're not going to make it. This is a setup. We're be um you can just see from the messages. Yeah. You know, and but yet the people still because we because we want reassurance, we want yeah. guarantee, we have we do have fear. And you know, it's it's not enough just to be told like don't don't be afraid. It's like, well, no, I am going to be afraid. Yeah. Um. So it is hard. Mm-hmm. It is hard to to say to trust. Yeah. Well, yeah. And as that, a human, but, but that, that's the thing um about fear is like do not be afraid. 
I think that may paint in a way of like, oh, like, what do you mean? Don't be afraid. Don't jump off this cliff that I don't know what's at the bottom. Don't be afraid. I saw this thing once. It was like, um, courage, I think it was. Like, courage is not like the ability to not be afraid. It's the fact that you do it anyway. Okay. And so I think that's the important thing is to have the courage to still do the things that you're afraid of, not let the fear control, like, not let the fear dictate what you do. Right. But to have the courage to be afraid and still take that leap. Yeah. Still follow your, your, your faith, your gut. Um, and, and also uh, in here, it's interesting to me that so he's talking to these people who have been had the experience for 40 years mm-hmm. and he's telling them he, he's never let you down. He's not going to let you down. You got to believe not only you. So, uh, I find this is uh, meaningful. He says, the Lord, the God of your ancestors. Mm-hmm. Um, so he's taken it even further than 40 years. Yeah. Because the ancestors said, yeah, this is this is the God. This is who you want to you know, depend on. This is who, who takes Abraham. Who care of us. So, um, and I just feel that this story is relevant to today. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, I know. Um. There's obvious like this is a story about uncertainty and it's going forward into uncertain times, whatever that may be in someone's life. Mm -hmm. There's a ton of uncertainty and it's to the idea that we're all in we're all living uncertain lives. Right. And so you not all you can't really rely on other people to to promise you. No, it's certain. It's certain. Right. The one person you can. Right. We're, we're the only. All, the only person. We're yeah. all walking together. And there's only one person who went ahead of you right. on that journey. Right. And that's God. And so that's really the one person who can bring you comfort in uncertain right. times. Because other people, they can, they'll just bring more uncertainty. Right. And so it's very personal. And you just, yeah, it just tells you to, to and keep your faith. I, I, I also like, and I've said this before. When I read a Bible story and I see that they weren't so different than we are. Yeah. And, you know, here it says um, what you saw with your very eyes. So imagine. So it's, it is hard for us yeah. to like to keep strong in faith and to say, OK, this is going to happen and to believe the Bible and study. It was hard for the people who saw it happen. They had manna flying out of the sky. They had the ocean part. Yeah. You know, yeah, they had manna. Yeah, the ocean was a one-time deal, I'm guessing. The manna was, they were fed all that time. Quail and manna. It was hard for them. So I feel like it's sort of a merciful story, too, for us. Because Mm -hmm. it was like, we know it's hard. The people that were actually there had trouble. Yeah. But take heart. Take, you know, comfort and peace in knowing Mm -hmm. that that's the way you are. But it is something you can work on. Yeah. So so you don't, that's, that's why I was sort of getting rid of like the fear not and it's like okay instead have courage yeah because it's like you yeah obviously if you do it it means you're, you're fear not and you're going to do it but right it's to have courage to still go forward and i think it's like i kept saying you know um keep your faith yeah but i think this is more saying act on your faith yes like because they're Don't like be afraid yeah, to step forward. the whole time right. you know, they, they believe in god that's what faith right. is but and then this part they didn't act on right the faith that they had with god and it was yes. like uh how about we just don't because that's what he was saying it's like there's murmuring in the tents of right them not like oh maybe we shouldn't maybe we shouldn't and it's like they're not they aren't acting on it it's right like, well we believe in god but what if what if what if and it's like you have to act on that faith right and if you want to believe in god in this day and age you're new you you weren't brought up with anything you're deciding who do i want to follow it's really nice to know that this god the god our only god one God. Um, how long this this um God has been taking care of us? It's not a new. This isn't a. Let me sell you this idea. You know, yeah. it is. It's such a constant. Mm-hmm. You know, um, the Alpha and Omega, a constant, yeah, constant presence and protection to the people, non tiring. Not you know the the old people might tell you the Old Testament God gets angry and yeah. Um, no, he kind of got angry here in the story because mm-hmm. he says, you're not, guess what? You're not going up. We're going to let, the, but still patient. Mm-hmm. Ever, after this, is, Jesus still came to earth and, you know, did, did more for us. And, you know, like I, I always talk about, you know, the old or God in general of, and Jesus talked about in the 23rd Psalm about 
it's not a a god where it's like do this for me serve right me. right this, it's a god who is going before yes. you yes he's walking the path before right. you and letting you know it's safe and that's the important thing to take away from it yeah so i like it deuteronomy um the the end of the chapter but read the whole chapter and read beyond it and see what happens after read before <laughs> read beyond it read all of it guys but we're just read a little bit a week so that has been walk through thursday yes hope you enjoyed it if you have different thoughts about it let us know if it was too long and you fell asleep um wake up and watch the rest of it <laughs> uh we'll be back tomorrow with fun friday but go out and keep your faith don't let people diminish your faith and act on your faith if there's something that you're praying on and you're uncertain just do it just do it yeah. play nike all right guys peace